dear all honorable justice uh, mm sundaresh the honorable supreme court of india in a recent uh, speech before the before a conference in madurai <clears throat> lordships were thinking of how to create more opportunities he gave a slogan called beyond think beyond because the young lawyers are very brilliant and the new areas of opportunities are emerging and therefore the lordships felt this is the right time to think beyond and uh, the traditional areas like criminal law or the those things are receding like economic legislations intellectual property rights and uh, so many new things technologically driven are coming into the picture so why don't you think and then have a system so that we can equip our young talented uh, lawyers to capture these emerging opportunities commercial litigation is there insolvency and bankruptcy court is there intellectual property rights are there like that honorable justice uh, sundresh he is a judge who directly went to the honorable supreme court elevated even before without becoming a chief justice it shows the capability of this judge highly pleasing i have been appearing before the lordships for since 2011 a very pleasant very intelligent very kind and uh, widely read judge i wish you all uh, listen to his lecture on uh, the dispensation of justice in kannagi when the honorable chief justice and companion of senior judges came on the 20th year celebration of madurai bench the way he explained the concept of dharma the concept of sengo how a judge that time it's a king how he is dispensing the judge how powerful and uh, he you all know that the wrong uh, judgment of the uh, the king because of not applying the principles of natural justice saying that you hear the other side that resulted in an innocent person's uh, death and king took the responsibility and uh, uh, he left his uh, life so that is the standard of adjudication and that also lordships have explained in fact honorable justice uh, sundaresh sir in a, a book uh, book uh, cutting ceremony uh, i introduced lordships and i was talking about the dispensation of justice taking these skumbakarna and vibhishan who are talking about concept of dharma which is changing from time to time etc <clears throat> then came the lordships uh, he spoke extreme for kamraman i am prepared well so i was able to speak something but lordship was not sure that i will be speaking about uh, tam uh, ramayan and uh, samvad between vibhishan and kumbhakar on the concept of dharma such is their extempore knowledge a very good judge and this judge is uh, thinking that uh, there is a need for uh, abolishing he didn't say so much but it means that these tribunals we know chandra kumar was a union of india where honorable supreme court made several uh, references to the way in which these uh, tribunals are function i am from chennai friends but uh, though i am taking that uh, whatever is the version but nclt chennai bench uh, had very good judges very good judges starting from dvs prakash kumar sir amazingly talented and dispensation of justice equally good then uh, we have uh, now sanjeev uh, jain uh, justice and uh, then the other uh, judges dedicatedly they want to find a solution 
and Justice Ravichandran Ramaswamy. Uh, they're spending a lot of time and uh, they're, they're trying their best. Bharatarajan sir, adjudicating authority was there and Vijay Raghavan sir was there. They have done a very good job. Therefore, it should not be, discussion of this should not be taken as a reference to NCLT, but there is a, a thought. Why don't you abolish NCLT? This tribunal, is it required? We have to always test the relevance. And uh, the NCLT, why can't it be merged with the high courts? That was the Lordship's uh, explanation. Beautifully analyzed. Yeah. Maybe it's a, a thinking point, but it, uh, it should do better uh, than what is happening. Because you all know that the insolvency and bankruptcy code, the nation lost 60 to 12 like crores of rupees. The adjudicating time is uh, 900 days CIR process and uh, the employment is lost and 90 above percentage of companies went into liquidation. And the IBBI, which is responsible for all these losses, they are spending time in attacking the members. And nothing but attacking members without knowing what is happening. So they are not doing anything other than attacking members and immediately call the media and then inform them we have punished the members. And therefore they will publish so that they are diverting their failures and diverting like this. That will come to it. Now let's take this discussion. A thought beyond thinking beyond and uh, why don't you abolish these tribunals now comes this uh, judge honorable sundari sir now the lordships uh, that recording is before you i'm just summarizing these tribunals are functioning without and lack of accountability very important point We'll discuss with slight example. Complete failure of monitoring by the NCLT president or the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. And there is no qualitative disposal. Please mind you, this is what Lordships have said in the meeting uh, conference. With a view to merge these tribunals once for all with the High Court. Have more benches in the High Court. What's wrong? Very good thought. Very good thought. I can tell you why. These tribunals are functioning. These tribunals functioning is seriously impacting the access to justice. Dear friends, a senior lawyers, only few people are there. And uh, per day they will charge minimum 5 lakhs. And per day, very, very good, they are very capable, let's uh, think on this. But per day it is believed that North India and all their uh, take home is 1 crore or more for litigation. What is there in IBC to talk and then really it is not just a law is there you have to implement and uh, all are simple laws, complication is not there, it's a beneficial legislation. But how is it possible? Only few councils and the access to justice is terrible, time taken, not even 5 to 10 cases are heard today, it will take years once that matter is uh, appealed to NCL 80, it will be finished. So there is no justice at all, except cost and cost and cost. And uh, members are four years sitting there, four, five years. And uh, the same roster is not changed. Therefore, nobody will have guts to, if you want to survive there, you have to listen to whatever the, uh, the, the adjudicating authorities will say. They can abuse you, they can fine you, they can criticize you. Everything, five years, tenure, you have to bear with it. That is the real problem. I'm not saying all judges are like the wonderful judges are there, kind, a very good judges are there who want to give opportunity for youngsters. But then, as it's so you can see, one mistake, one person does mistake. It's like a drop of poison falling in a beautiful milk. That is the what. This is, this is a, ultimately NCLT adjudicating authorities, particularly when they are not retired high court judges, are exercising power without justice, creating tyranny. Dear friends, this is all for the Lordship's uh, uh, speech.
and little more additions done by us. Constitutional courts with more benches will be affected. Lordships believe that you do one thing. Why do you have this NCLT, separate administration, all that? Link it to the High Court. There will be superintendents of High Courts. There is a good roster system that gives opportunity for more lawyers to practice, not just few lawyers. And uh, then that is that transparency is much higher than this. Now, commercial litigation is increasing rapidly, providing more opportunities for the young and brilliant lawyers. And technical members, okay, you bring them here. And uh, many a times, if you see, it is a technical member who takes over the adjudication. And uh, see, a high court judge, retired judges, they have the adjudications. And they will be looking from various angles of interpretation. Technical members like CA, ACS and all, they will be, you know, suddenly power comes, they lose their balance. They may be wounding so many people in their, their these things. And the lordships, uh, M.M. Sundaresh Sahajan or the Justice R. Mahadevan, they are people, look at the human face of the issue. And uh, now this is the point you all can hear. And uh, here itself is that we are giving another link also. Um, this is um, this is the two minutes he has given. Lordship's uh, lecture clearly whatever I recorded is that. And uh, now recently, Honorable Chief Justice of India. Uh, very, very, you know, we all have a greatest respect for the lordships for bringing out the access to justice, the doorsteps to the litigants and the technology driven. So much uh, we could see uh, happen during these two long years. And uh, they, he also felt that something is drastically wrong happening. Now we'll see uh, Justice uh, Sudhakar, sir, he was a very good administrator, known for his administrative skills. And But then uh, you see the situation. The Honorable Adjudicate Justice Sudhakar, sir, in, uh, in an affidavit before Honorable Supreme Court, filed a petition saying that the adjudicating authorities, 15 out of 23, are people having serious question marks. And uh, I, the Supreme Court finally asked them to, their term was not extended. And uh, <clears throat> see what a word used, considering the verification reports bearing on the character, antecedents, performance, and suitability of the members, the union government may take an appropriate action in that matter. In, in this, now, what happened to this? Uh, that means for three years, th these adjudicating authorities were dispensing the justice. The nation has lost lakhs of crores of rupees. What is that uh, remedy? Will it have a good impact on the uh, judiciary's independence? Uh, this is a question to be answered. That would be there in the mind of Honorable Chief Justice M.M. Uh, uh, Sundari sir. Now, this gentleman, he is a technical member of uh, Honorable NCLT Chennai Bench. He was, uh, well, his term was not extended because of the above issues. And there was a report by the Honorable, uh, this uh, very reputed National Daily, which said, uh, the, the, if you read that, you'll see there was absolutely no legal fig leaf. Orders were going to the highest bidder. There was an instance when the litigant had paid 15 lakhs, and was waiting for a positive order. He was shocked to know that it went against. At least the member was fair enough to return the money, saying the other party paid more. What a, what a statement, which remains unchallenged till date. Then, let us see what Justice V. Ram Subramanian, one of the most respected judges of Honorable Supreme Court, he made a comment on the functioning of this uh, IBC. You see, an impact assessment study of IBC has now become necessary for more reasons than one. Of late, the cases of misuse of 
the provisions of the code by all stakeholders such as debtors, creditors, resolution professionals, resolution applicants have started attracting the attention of the courts. For instance, NCLAT highlighted in a case very recently that large business houses with multiple business arms cannot be allowed to disrupt small businesses. You see, Justice Ram Subramaniam further said cases of misconduct part of the resolution professional high-handedness on the part of some of the creditors, abuse of the court by debtors through collusive CARPs and vultures eyeing for takeover, actually, um, etc. <clears throat> Ram Subramaniam, Honorable Justice, uh, left out this IBBI because IBBI is placing themselves, they are responsible for all this. They should have easily solved this problem and they are attacking members and then immediately, you see, IBBI, you ask a question, a bank manager retires at 60 and uh, by using his influence, he will get all the uh, assignments, 10, 20. Now, IBBI has nothing, no answer for it. 10 assignments, 20 assignments, can you do? And a so simple mistake, something is there in a business legislation, they will immediately publish, call for the media, tell them to publish it. Actually, there is a total mismanagement of IBBI. And uh, they are giving an impression they are very strict and all, passing uh, rigid legislations. The courts has not asked why, what you are doing? Nation has lost so much of money. What you have done when the NCLT president himself is telling the Honorable Supreme Court that uh, last three years, the conduct of 15 out of 23 is not good. Then what you are doing? Sleeping. They are trying to cover up this. And what actions uh, they should have come out with a white paper because the implement, successive implementation of this code depends on these people only. And they have not done it. And even Ram Subramaniam, <clears throat> once he had a discussion with me saying that uh, he has got a very good knowledge, you know, he's a jurist par excellence. So he was thinking, then I was telling, this is what is happening like that. Anyway, uh, then therefore what he said is, it will be worthwhile to have a thorough study conducted at the earliest so that there is a timely cure. Otherwise, we may land up in a situation where IBC itself needs a resolution plan. Definitely, IBC needs a resolution plan. Lacks of crores are being lost. And the MCA, you know, they always trying to please the uh, Honorable Prime Minister or the Finance Minister. They are trying to suppress all this uh, wrongdoings. Therefore, they are not knowing what is happening. And daily they are telling, we will change this legislation, that legislation. And it is gone for big people. And big people intimidate. They misuse the entire system. You can see the judicial member, the technical member ran through that. And it is none other than Chennai bench, where the Justice uh, Sudhakar sir used to come and sit along with him in the benches. Everything is known. But till then, no solution was found. And they say that in Chennai and all is very small cut. The uh, as he was telling, uh, we ask very little. But if you go to Bombay and Delhi, it will be too much. But everybody knows the media doesn't write. Only Economic Times took the courage and then published that. And uh, now, Honorable Chief Justice very beautifully passed two judgments. How a judicial officer misconduct can be established? In this Parekh case, the issue of whether a judicial officer has been actuated by an oblique motive or corrupt practice has to be determined upon careful appraisal of the material on record. Direct evidence of corruption may not always be forthcoming in every case involving misconduct of this nature. A wanton breach of government governing principles of law Procedures well may well be indicative of given case of motivated, if not reckless, disregard to the legal principles. The absence of cogent explanation to the contrary, it is for the disciplinary authority to determine whether a pattern has emerged on the basis of which an inference of judicial officer was actuated by extraneous considerations can be drawn. Honorable Justice, uh, Chief Justice of India has said this. And uh, you can read this. Now, even we go into this Dharma Shastras, 
they have defined how a judge has to perform. What is that expected of a judge? You all can see this. Now friends, and there is a call and let us all have a debate on this matter. Thank you. Thank you very much.